So the State of FinOps survey, which we run every year, uh, launched February of this year uh, with our 2025 edition, it started to show this trend. So 65% of organizations beginning to look at SaaS spend. Around 40% data center and private cloud uh, starting to trickle up in those. Uh, but the most interesting number was how many are managing AI spend, not using AI to manage their spend, but are managing AI spend within their practice. 63% now, today, beginning to do this. Now, they're probably very early stage. Some of you are just looking at it and thinking about it, but it's part of the remit. So March 20th of this year, we launched the FinOps Framework 2025 edition. Uh, we have a technical advisory council. I'll put them up on the screen here in a bit. Uh, they come together each year, collect the inputs from the practitioner community, from all the events, from the state of FinOps data, and update the framework uh, with a lot of changes. So this is a bit of an eye chart. I'm going to make it a little, little bit easier. You can find this on the website. There's a PDF and all the things. But this is the basic structure of the 25 framework. At the top, we've got business strategy and technology strategy informing everything we're doing in FinOps. Those things are coming together, which we're going to dive into, to essentially set the profile of the practice, what we call the FinOps scope. The scope of the practice then trickles down to define which personas are involved in the practice for that scope, which domains and capabilities are leveraged for that scope. And then it's implemented via various phases and speeds inform, optimize, operate, all that, as well as maturities, crawl, walk, runs, that are defined and really driven by the scope, which at the top is driven by a business priority and strategy to say how quickly do we want to move versus how slowly, how much do we want to spend, all of those things. So FinOps Scopes, which is a new concept as part of the March 20th release, introduces this idea that above the FinOps practice, you've got business strategy and technology strategy, common things that need to come together, and in between these, there's a bunch of things driving demand from the business. Uh, the business might say, we really need to get unit economics in place. Uh, the business might say, we need better predictability. They might say, you know, we need to deliver services and features, all these things that come in. And between these, we start to see the capabilities as driven by the business strategy and tech strategy align on different sides. Business sides focused on unit economics. Tech strategy says, OK, well, I need to figure out how I'm an architect for cloud. Business side says, you know, give me benchmarking. Tech side says, I'm going to think about workload placement. Right? So these joined up capabilities are intersecting on both sides and being informed by both of these pieces. Now, if we come back to this, those things are informing what we need to do. They start to set a FinOps scope, scope of your practice. A scope is defined as a segment of technology-related spending to which, I'm going to get this just right, you apply FinOps concepts. A scope of, of technology-related spending to which practitioners apply FinOps-related concepts. So if we think about the Iron Triangle, which many of you have seen out there, right? do we want it good, fast, or cheap? A scope is taking this concept of what's important to the business based on the business strategy and the tech strategy, and it's starting to apply these concepts based on what the business needs right now, or what that team needs, or what that app needs. So if you think of a scope as almost like a profile of the practice, all of you who've been doing FinOps for a bit are probably running sort of an efficient cloud scope already. That's like one scope of your practice. We want to run cloud in an efficient way. You've got a set of capabilities. You're optimizing rates. You're forecasting. Different people are being involved. You've got different data sources coming in or KPIs or maturities being defined. But then you might have a different scope of your practice that says, I really want to innovate with AI. This is important. It's going to change my priorities. It's going to change who I engage. It's going to focus my priorities. I'm, I'm not going to optimize with AI. I need to move fast. I want to innovate. But I want to make sure I know what I'm spending. And I'm forecasting that spend. I know where it's going. You might have another scope that's like, I've got a group that's trying to get out of that data center. Or they're trying to migrate. So that one, again, it's not going to be right-sizing and the things. They're going to be moving quickly, making sure they're budgeting. They're not getting the double bubble. They're allocating properly. They're tracking the change. And you might have another scope that says, I want to start bringing in licensing costs. I keep buying things in cloud and then wasting the license that I purchased on-prem, so I need to integrate those things better. I need to work more closely with my ITAM friends or my SAM friends or whichever group is managing the license and pull this together. So again, the FinOps scope uh, really sets the stage for how the practice works. In fact, the practice changes in these different scopes. It's not just about infrastructure. It's not just about where you're applying it. It gets down to uh, could have data in multiple places. AI is a great example. You might have spending in public cloud and SaaS, and you might have some in your data center. The scopes as well, uh, you may have multiple scopes within a single type of spend. I was talking to one of our uh, uh, large friends at a, at a, at a bank, uh, a tier one FinServe, 
And they were saying, you know, we have 12 different business units, and they're all on these two clouds, and they all have a different scope of practice, even though they're in the same clouds. One business unit is very early on, and they're focused on one set of things. Another business unit is more mature. One is a central IT group. They're really trying to optimize for efficiency. One is delivering new product and customer experiences. They're trying to optimize for, optimize for speed. Scopes are not defined by the FinOps Foundation. We're defining a framework for you to take flexibly as a building block to define your own scopes based on your business strategy. So within this, you are going to say, my strategy for this unit at this time is this. We're going to define our practice of scopes in this way. And the scope is driven by that intersecting uh, technology such that a scope may say that you determine you might not even do a capability right now. Uh, if you read the FinOps book, I've got to stop kicking that coffee. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if you've read the FinOps book, uh, we had a concept called informed ignoring. And that was like, you know, you're not ignoring a capability. I'm not just like, we don't need to do that. I'm saying, I'm informed by my business strategy. I don't need to do this one right now. Scopes are the codification, the personification, the, the, the real world application of that. So a scope might say, I'm going to deprioritize a certain set of capabilities based on my business strategy. A scope could say that I want to include or exclude a certain persona. AI is coming in. Well, this is a new set of services. We might need to involve security in the conversation. But for our business as usual scope, we might not need to because it's a known set of services. Uh, scopes can also change the th thresholds for KPIs and optimizations within something. You might have an optimized really heavy scope and another scope where you don't care about optimization. Critical thing about scopes, though, if you think about the Iron Triangle, is they are increasing or decreasing the speed of your practice. You all likely know the phases of the framework that circular, inform, optimize, operate. In some scopes, you might go really quickly through them. In others, you might go more slowly based on the business strategy. So going back to scopes, if we think about AI across that, AI may sit across multiple different infrastructure sources. Again, remember, scopes are not about just an infrastructure type. They're about how do we want to do the practice for AI and across all these different areas. The Iron Triangle says we got to pick good, fast, or cheap, right? We can't do all of the things. Uh, so there's different quadrants things might fall into, right? We might have the expensive way of doing it or the low priority way or the low quality way of doing it. These are decisions driven by business strategy and technology strategy that we want to bring together. So think about designing a new scope, all right? And this scope is for your new, killer, innovative AI app that's going to change your business and drive a lot of revenue, whatever that app is for you. You've got a set of criteria you're going to consider when you're building out that scope, that set of practice. What are the inputs I need to do that? So for this scope, we might say, hey, I, I want to spend more. I'm OK to spend more money, because this is important to the business. I might also say, innovation's critical, got to deliver fast. And I also want to pay attention to the carbon outputs, because it's AI, and it's probably putting out more energy or using more energy. So given these three things, the scope of this practice falls into the expensive, expensive quadrant, right? I'm, I'm more focused on innovation speed uh, of delivery, not cost. I might also say, you know, in technology side, I'm going to do some of my training and my models and my data center. I'm going to make that choice. I'm going to do most of my development in public cloud, some third-party frameworks, and I'm going to use a mix of different types of technology spend, because now the, AI pract or the FinOps practice is involved earlier on in helping figure out what the model looks like of when it, how much does it cost for the cloud portion, the data center portion, the SaaS portion. So as a result of this, you're going to engage a bunch of different sets of capabilities and personas in order to drive the cadence and the maturity that you do with each practice and each maturity uh, within there. So for this AI app, and you notice scopes are represented as tabs at the top of the FinOps framework now, you will have different personas engaged. For this one, note over here, we're pulling in security teams because, again, new services, we might need to do compliance or make sure that these are falling within our, our needs. But we're really not going to focus on optimization on this one because it's about delivering and innovating. We're going to focus on making sure we know what the spend is, getting it set up, planning, and estimating. We might also have our business as usual scope in cloud, which is going to engage all the personas, maybe be working with our ITAM friends or our sustainability friends and have a more balanced mix of what is happening within there. Hey everyone, producer Andrew here. I hope you enjoy this video as much as I enjoy sharing all of these amazing FinOps stories, best practices, and expertise. Please take a moment to like, subscribe, click the notification bell, and leave comments and questions for our speakers. Check out more FinOps content on our YouTube channel. We appreciate the support.